Chidush Eirem tells us this is because the whole miracle of Hanukkah was something that was not, strictly speaking, halachically necessary. They had plenty of oil, but all the oil was tummy. They only had one jar of pach katan of shemen that was tohar. Problem is, you don't need tohar oil to light the menorah. You can light the menorah with tummy oil. This is the principle called tumah hutra b'tzibor. For a communal offering, you can use tumah. The Abishter didn't have to give us a miracle at all. If we wouldn't have had, if the oil wouldn't have lasted, we would have lit with Shem and Tomei. Elamai, HaKadosh Baruch out of his love, wanted us to do the mitzvah behidor, beyond what we have to do, so we reciprocate back to HaKadosh Baruch by doing the mitzvah behidor, beyond what we have to do. It's mamish midah keneged midah. The whole nase of Hanukkah, or at least the nase of the Pacha Shemen, is an exemplification of hidor mitzvah. But some Svarim point out that although it might be true that for all the other days, Bidiyevet, Shem and Tameh would have been good and the miracle was there for Hidra Mitzvah, they were Mechuyev on day one to use Shem and Tohar. And they would not have been able to use Shem and Tameh if Chas Shalom they had not found a Pach. And that is because, although Tumah Hutra B'Tzibar, but when you are mechanech, when you are rededicating, when you're taking a that had been desecrated, and you have to make a new menorah, and you have to start, and you're starting from, from the square one, you must do it with purity. And this is the emes, an important lesson to ponder. In life, there are going to be times in which there are pressures, there are stresses, there are shas hatchaks, there are bidievets. We all know People will have shyness, people will have difficulties. But you initially have to establish your life on the fundamental integrity of doing the Ratzon Hashem in the best possible way. Because if you start off L'Chatchila with the attitude that my B'Diyavid will be my L'Chatchila, then eventually you won't be keeping the B'Diyavids either. Eventually one is going to go totally Chutz L'Machina. Halacha recognizes, there are times in which we have to use Shem and Tomei. But only when the Chinuch HaMenorah is Betahara, the Chinuch HaMikdash is Betahara, then one can work within the halachic framework of sometimes compromise Shasat Chak B'Diyavid. And that brings me to a second point. The Gemara Masechah Shabbos tells us that the ideal for lighting near Hanukkah is you light it outside of your doorway again. Machlokas, if we do that today, many people do, as, as you see, many people don't. But Medina de Gemara, the Ner Hanukkah is to the left of your doorway, and the mezuzah is to the right of the doorway. Mezuzah biyamin, Ner Hanukkah is small. In fact, the Sifri Hasidus, the Nei brings, it's Marumas. Parshas Miket is almost always Shabbos Hanukkah, the overwhelming majority of years. And the word Shinasayim, which is in Parshas Mikai at the beginning, can spell, binotrikan, smile, ner tadlik, light your ner to the left, yamin mezuzah, to the right mezuzah. What is the aside of mezuzah to the right and ner Hanukkah to the left? Again, the Svas Emes writes that in the Mishkan there are two different symbols for the Taira, the Beis HaMikdash. There is the Luchais that are contained in the Kodesh HaKadoshim, and they are marumas to the Torah Shebech Literally, they are etched in stone, quite literally. They are immutable, they are unchangeable. There is no human input or creativity in their formulation. They are simply there. But they are mechusa, they are inaccessible. They are covered in the Aron HaKodesh. Nobody can go in there. And then we have the Menaira, which as the Roshiva said, many Mephorshim point out, is the Torah Shebech It comes from human effort. It flickers, it has different nuances, different colors, and the like. The Chidush Eirim says, or the Shavasemis, but he quotes his grandfather in this as well, that in every Jewish house, at least Hanukkah time, we have the same two symbols. The mezuzah is a miniature Aron Kaidesh that has the Torah Shebichsav, the Parshish of the Torah Shebichsav. The Menaira is the Torah Shebalpeh. With apologies to the lefties, we normally say that the yamin is the stronger hand, the small is the left, the weaker hand. The relationship of Teresh is the following. 
And again, it's, it's echoing what the Rashiva said. Tarasha Balpeh is filled with creativity, with chiddish, with human input, with our attempt to understand HaKadosh Baruch Hu's Torah and apply it to new situations, new technologies, new crises. The Torah is eternal, but we have to admit the world is ever-changing. Life is ever-changing. How do we adapt? How do we apply? How do we understand the nitzchias of Hashem's Torah? To every new problem that comes down the pike, whether it's land for peace or prisoner exchange or surrogate motherhood, this is the kayach of Tyre Shabalpa. But our ability, like a kite, to fly and soar and be machadesh is only if, like a kite, we are held, we are rooted. The amin, the foundation, the strong uh, point that's holding us down, has to be a Kaddish Baruch's expressed resin. And then, when the mezuzahs be amin, then we can soar with the lights of the menorah. There was another point. The Maral points out in his very, very wonderful sefer, when one should try to, to look at it, uh, the near mitzvah. So many, so many ha'aris in the sefer, so many points that the Maral makes. But one of the points he makes is a very interesting one in terms of the time of year. He points out that Hanukkah not only the Nisim, the Milchama, but Hanukkah, the date of Hanukkah itself, is connected, although it's not exact because of the solar calendar, to the winter solstice, the longest night of the year. The longest night of the year appears to be a time in which darkness is getting more and more and more, longer and longer. The days are getting shorter and shorter. It seems to be that the ore is going to be vanquished, the ore is going to be destroyed by the choshech that keeps on going. And yet we know that precisely at the point when you have the longest night of the year, Maral points out that is the turning point. That is when the day gets imperceptibly longer. And therefore Hanukkah, besides the history of the events of the Yeshua, Hanukkah, the Maral says, is a metaphor and a mashal for the koach of or to be miskaber over choshech. Of course, Yovan itself is called the golas of choshech. But there are many types of darkness in the world. We have the darkness of the ignorance of Torah, the darkness of Achenu B'nai Yisrael. So many are far from HaKadosh Baruch There is the darkness of a person's personal despair. There is the darkness of the Tzoros that Am Yisrael faces. And Hanukkah is a message of hope, of optimism, of faith. Faith in HaKadosh Baruch and faith that HaKadosh Baruch Hu gave each and every one of us the kochos to be able to bring light in the, into the world. And this is a very, very important lesson. Now the concept of a yeshiva to bring people who did not have a, an ed Jewish education or Jewish background when they were younger, all right, this is budget. Everybody, everybody does that. But a half a century ago, it was quite a bit of a chiddush. And many people had the attitude the darkness is so overwhelming. All we can do is focus on ourselves, focus on our families, try to be the Sheva Sapleta, the little bit of remnant that could survive. What are you trying to fight the Choshech? It's like a drop in the ocean, whatever you do. And yet there were people, Baruch Hashem, some are very much with us, some are not with us anymore, who looked at the Choshech and instead of simply saying, I give up, they said, I'm going to try to light a light. Now, by Hanukkah as well, they may have had the attitude. We only have light for one day. What's the tachlis of lighting for one day? We're not going to have tomorrow till her light. What's the use of doing something today if tomorrow it's not going to last? But what does Hanukkah tell you? I'll peep shot. I'm not giving any fancy chidusha. You have one day. You do what you can. And then the Rebbeinu Shalom takes over. You don't do what you can. The Rebbeinu Shalom doesn't take over. You have one day. You light one day. You can reach one person, one Talmud. Do it. Aye, it's a drop in the ocean. Well, for that drop in the ocean, there's a Hatzalah. Right? Somebody, tell a story about somebody who was once gathering starfish uh, who were throwing them back in the ocean. They were, they were washed ashore. So somebody said, what's the tachlis here? There are a million starfish. Uh, that are going to die. He says, well, at least this one went back into the other. This one's going to live. Call him a kayim nefesh achas mi Yisrael, ki ilu ki yamay 
And yet we find, like Hanukkah, a person has that amuna, amuna in the kayach of Tyra, amuna in the light of Tyra, amuna in the Rebani Shalom, amuna in their kaychas, because a person needs amuna in their kaychas. HaKadosh Baruch Hu takes the yishtadlis that it seems to be so ineffectual, and he blesses it beyond what we would have thought possible. Baruch Hashem, there is, of course, much, much, much work to be done. The Avaida is not finished. The final point I want to bring out just very quickly is that Jirashi points out, again, from the, from the Sifri, Ba'aloischa es So Rashi says, again, from Chazal, that when you light a menaira, when you apply a flame to the candle, the Kohen has to hold it there until there is a heat and a combustion that arises from within the candle itself, meaning as, as the wick gets hot, the heat will eventually set fire from within and come out. Shalheves olam elaha. This, I think, may have been Rav Mendel's most fundamental insight and contribution. And that is, in raising someone to Yiddishkeit, it is not enough to simply tell a person what to do, give them an instruction, give them an art scroll, give them a translation. Rather, eventually, the person should become knowledgeable enough, committed enough, caring enough, that there's a shalhevis that comes up within. The goal of all of our chinuch is not to simply take whatever Torah people have and put it on the Talmud, but to enable every Talmud to be a shalhevis, ayla mi'elaha, to be a machadesh, to be a person who has self-sufficiency, to be a person who can open up a Gemara or a Rishon or a Shulchan Aruch, even without a translation, and to understand it, to enjoy it, to be able to apply it, to be able to bring their own insights and individuality. This too is Nichlal in the vision of the menorah, Shal Heves Ola Me'elaha. So Bekitzer, as we think about the Batira of an Adam Gadol, again, it is not a time for crying, although those of us that were Zohar to know do have much to cry about. And those who weren't Zohar to know have what to cry about that they, didn't, uh, they weren't Zohar to know. But I think we can learn from the idea that the Menaira had to be Mechunich B'Tahara, that when you set your life's agenda, you set it to live a L'Chatzchila Dika life. Questions come, questions come. But the goal has to be not just to be Yaitzeh in your Yiddishkeit, but to live a L'Chatzchila Dika life. Number two, to be creative, to be innovative, to use the totality of your personality, but to do so when it is rooted in the mezuzah biyamin, the Devar Hashem. Number three, to have hope, to be optimistic, to understand that there's much darkness in the world, but there's a Rebani Shalaylam that, that is a kol yachal, and within each and every one of us is an Aylam Katan that has a tremendous kayach, and if we do whatever we're capable of doing, as small as we think that is, if we do our hishtadlis in the world, HaKadosh Baruch Hu will bless that hishtadlis well beyond what we thought would have been possible. And finally, the goal of self-sufficiency, that each of us should endeavor to become the shalheves ayla me'elaha. In this way, Reb Mendel continues to be uh, our Rebbe and our guide, inspiring the spirit of our Sameach together with uh, his wonderful collaborator of almost half a century, and in that way we'll, we'll certainly bring a much, much nachas uh, to our Rosh Yeshiva, but ultimately, of course, to our Kaddish Baruch Hu.